All right. Ah. Uh, Ow, oh, ow, oh, ow, oh, what are you gonna do? Ow, oh, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Ow, oh, oh, no, okay, no, yeah, no, this, this spray is not for me. Let's see, the, well, another big issue that people are gonna have is we're told we have tens of thousands of satellites orbiting the Earth for GPS systems, cell phones, military radar, navigational equipment. How do we rectify that? It's a fake. Yeah. Well, and they also say that there's an international space station out there, and there's a, a Hubble telescope floating out there taking wonderful CGI Photoshop pictures that they send us back with their amazing 400-mile uh, outer space internet connection to the Hubble Space Telescope. When receiving data from deep space, we want to collect as much signal energy as possible. ESA's antennas are 35 meters wide with the same surface as an Olympic swimming pool. The dish alone weighs 130 tons, and we can point it with the accuracy of 6 milli-degrees to any position in the sky. And now the, the, inter the internet space connection has gone to over a million miles. It's over 9,000! With the new Rosetta mission, have you seen that one? Mm -hmm. The CGI Photoshop pictures from that are just wonderful and well worth the billions of dollars we're spending to get them. <laughs> yeah, so... The, the illusion is that there's a space station and satellites and uh, uh, telescopes just floating out there in infinite space. But you and I know that no matter how high you go, you come right back down. Whatever goes up must come down. The illusion is that at some point, if you go high enough, high enough, this gravity they claim exists that pulls you back down to the Earth suddenly just you pop out of it and into the vacuum of space. You don't pop out of gravity like a stripper in a goddamn birthday cake. It's a gradual easement of force. The gravity of an object weakens the further you get away from it, and this weakening can in fact be measured. Somehow I am not shocked that Eric lacks a basic middle school understanding of physics. Ding, ding, ding! What do we have for Johnny? Now, the vacuum of space can exist because it's connected to the non-vacuum of the atmosphere in Earth and all the other supposed planets that exist. So a vacuum must be a closed system, but they claim space is a vacuum and space is an open system. So it's, imp it's philosophically impossible for, there, for space to be a vacuum. And the way that they... Kirby and Rainbow Vacuums now. Your choice only $6.99. You're right, only $6.99 for Kirby or Rainbow Vacuums. That's zero down at $15 a month fool us into thinking that this actually is plausible is three threefold. First way they do it is in zero G planes, which are Boeing 737s that do parabolic maneuvers that have a free fall illusion, uh, a free fall effect rather that happens for about a minute where you can be floating in these planes. And that's how they get this outer space look like you're floating in outer space. Anyway, let's watch this and this is before Hello? there. There, the plane just went into its parabolic. This is so cool. It's and it's not on exactly the same trajectory as her, so she's floating toward the ceiling. Look at this. Wow. Are you going to be okay? And you see her hair, too. So there she is floating, and there the plane is going to stabilize again. And look, she comes right down. Yes, I can hear it's you. fairly clear. It is fairly clear that you forgot the rest of this 17-minute long interview where astronaut Katie Coleman floats around and discusses life aboard the ISS. Either this is the longest parabolic flight in history, Katie Coleman can actually float, or maybe someone is intentionally cutting up clips to misrepresent an argument and lie to their viewers. The second way is uh, through wires, harnesses, and green screen for the longer shots in the ISS, for instance, they do that. Now check the man on the right with the USMC t-shirt. Check his arm. Watch this. Check his arm. Look, his arm goes 
goes to grab him, look. But he doesn't grab him, he grabs the wire. Look, there's no, there's nothing there. But he's grabbing something and it's tugging his, t he's tugging his trousers up. And then check him on the left. He looks down to see. Look, he's checking it out himself. Yeah? You want your proof? You've just got proof there. Really? If you don't accept this, then you are just absolutely brainwashed. Really? This is absolute proof that they are using wires on the space station. Really? And the third way for like the outside shots they do uh, are in pools that are actually underwater. And this is confirmed by the fact that there's bubbles rising in the pool in a lot of their shots. And uh, people on YouTube have dissected a lot of the ISS and other supposed space footage and all the space bubbles that are coming out of their helmets. Some people are even wearing uh, uh, scuba, scuba gear. Uh, they found that as well. If we are to assume that those are actual air bubbles and not some sort of space debris, then the air bubble would have to come from one of the scuba divers in the tank and not the astronauts, since the astronaut suits don't expel oxygen. That would mean whoever's job it is to edit the tape has expertly removed all but one air bubble. That is quite the interesting theory. So that they, they fake these uh, zero-G illusions by being in water, uh, by being in zero-G planes, and by being in harnesses in front of a green screen. And that makes us think that it's possible that out there in space, you could just be kind of floating around like they show us in the movies. But as far as we'll ever know, as far as you or I would ever know, we go as high as we can in a plane or a balloon or a rocket, and we come right back down. Even the rockets they send up, if you're honest about it, you'll notice that they don't go straight up. All their rockets start a parabolic curve, they start to arc over, and the ones they claim are successful are the ones that go out of view before uh, they come all the way back down. And if anybody asks, why do they always curve over like that? They just say that uh, they're going around the curvature of the ball Earth, and they'll reach escape velocity soon, and at some point they'll just pop. A rocket arcs after takeoff because it is an efficient way to achieve orbit. They take advantage of the spinning Earth to reach their destination. Isaac Newton figured this stuff out in the late 1600s. This isn't rocket science, you know. Hey. Hey. Oh, and this came for you, Pierre. Hey! <laughs> right out of the gravity and then they'll be floating, which is another problem because if you were in a vacuum and you were using rocket thrusters or any, anything to thrust your, yourself forward, you wouldn't go forward or in any direction you wanted to. You just spin wildly out of control like a gyroscope in 360 degrees in three dimensions, spinning wildly. You, you don't go anywhere that way. Um, so the whole idea of space travel is a big joke. It's, it's all science fiction. Rocket firing in a vacuum in. Three, two, one, zero. Hey! <laughs> it happened so fast I wasn't looking. Come on, man! That's too easy! <laughs>